Have you ever wondered what is the difference between the settings you use than those used by the most dedicated players in Destiny 2? Well, today I'm going to be showing you the best configurations and optimizations for Destiny, both on PC and on console. Hi everyone, I'm Alex and welcome to a new Destiny 2 video. This is a very important one that can make a big difference on how you enjoy the game, since some of the things that we'll see here will allow you to have the game better optimized and even enable settings that you didn't know about, which I assure you can give you some advantages. So let's go! Once we enter the settings, we'll have these five menus and we're gonna be focusing on each of them, so in case you wanna skip something, check the timestamps below. If you are on PC, the first thing is the keyboard and mouse configuration. The sensitivity of the mouse is something quite personal since it depends on your comfort with it. However, I'm going to give you a few useful tips on how to adjust it in a way that suits you. The first thing I recommend is that you disable the precision mode on Windows. To do this, go to settings, devices, mouse and then advanced mouse options. Here you go to pointer and make sure to disable this little square. It is important to do it because otherwise your DPI, that is the sensitivity of the mouse, will always be modified and will not be comparable to the one I use or anyone you compare to. As for my sense, I use 6 in the game with the DPI at 600. I do not recommend that you just copy my sense because the best advice I can give you to get your own sense is to enter into the game and make sure you can make a 360 turn by moving the mouse from one end to the other, making sure you have enough room to move it. So yeah, just try to make a full turn with the camera Although, if you have a lot of space, then try to find the limits on how far you feel comfortable moving the mouse. But keep in mind, it also depends on the slide you use to aim. If you aim with your entire arm, you will need more room, but if you only use your wrist, you will need much less and a higher sensitivity. And since we are talking about the subject, I will answer a question that is very common on my streams and maybe it will be useful to you. And it is the fact that I get asked a lot about these sleeves, although anything similar that you can buy anywhere for sports will work. I use it because I aim with my entire arm, and this way I can avoid friction with my desk. Since well, having your bare arm causes it to stick to the table and that's annoying when trying to aim. To make sure you are comfortable with your sense, also use this literal exercise to try to keep your sight on point while moving. It may be a little harder depending on the practice you have with the mouse, but it will help you to find the sense which you are comfortable with. As for the ADS modifier, which is the sense when aiming the weapon, I usually use the base one, which sounds like it's the same as the hip fire, but it isn't. If you want something that is exactly the same, you should set it higher like 1.2, 1.4, although it depends on the weapon. I like the extra position, so I leave it at 1. Next, if you are a crazy person, you can put invert configuration. And in the other one, I recommend disabling it as it can affect your precision. And before finishing with the mouse, if you wonder how to improve your precision, the thing I recommend is to practice. A lot of practice. And if you want to improve quickly, I recommend you to use external games like Kovac, Saint Training or A-Labs. And this last one is free on Steam. Now leaving the sense aside, it's time to talk about the key configuration. Here I can show you how I have everything set up, but just keep in mind you don't have to copy everything and put it in yourself like it's gonna work perfectly for you. You can check them out, but do not hesitate to make a change if you feel like. However, the keys I'm going to empathize that you change are the next. I recommend you to add the mouse wheel as an extra jump key to help you to skate, because if you play at high FPS, you can spam the jump button in a way that allows you to go faster. It is especially helpful in Warlock and Titan. The other one is have the interaction button on a key that allows you to use it while moving. This is super important in PvP and PvE because it will not limit your movement while still interacting with something like reviving an ally and fighting for your life, or collecting heavy ammo. Usually the key that is used is one of the mouse, such as the side ones, although you can also put it on a key on the keyboard such as the left alt. Another detail that I highly recommend you is to learn how to use fixed keys to swap your weapons. They are much more practical than using the mouse wheel. And believe me, you will thank me later in the long run. Because I actually used the mouse wheel at the beginning. But you will see that you have way better control on your weapon swaps. Finally, take advantage of your keyboard and put a quick access to everything. This way you will not waste time navigating on the menu. Since you can just press the key and get into it. That is why we have so many keys on the keyboard, right? Now let's jump to the controller configuration. 
Honestly, I am not a controller expert in Destiny, so instead of making a fool of myself, my recommendation is that you see Shadow Destiny video about it, because he explained everything you need to know about control sensitivity and settings in a way that everyone can understand. He is also a great PvP player, so it will help you to know how to take advantage of the legal aimbot that is sometimes the controller with aim assist. Jokes aside, you really need to learn how to aim with a controller and have some good settings to take advantage of it. So if you want to check his video, you have a link down below. Now let's talk about video configuration but the basic ones. And to make this more friendly to everyone, we are going to start with the graphic options that are both on PC and new gen consoles. Right here you can see the settings that we have on PS5, which is where I'm going to be showing you how they work. The first one is screen bounds. Surely you will think, well, simple, set it at the same size as the frame of your screen, and that's it, right? And here is where I show you why it's worth watching this video. Because this screen limiter does not affect the whole game, but only your HUD, that is, the information on the screen such as your profile in orbit or the playing information such as the super, radar and others. So this has a little trick that I've been using on PC for months, especially since I switched to a bigger monitor. Check this out, the closer you have your radar to the center of the screen, the easier it will be to notice it. You will have to move your eyes less towards the corner, and you can even see it with your peripheral vision depending on how big your screen is and how far you are from it. So I highly recommend you to set it closer, especially if you are a PvP player where you need a lot of attention on the radar. And if you are wondering about the radar color right now, we will talk about it later on the video. Now it is time to talk about HDR. This can be extremely personal, but if you want to be a competitive player who always sees everything clearly on the screen, I recommend you to disable HDR. Yes, I understand that if you check it side by side, you will end up thinking like HDR is really good, with more vivid colors and darker shadows. However, those shadows will be hiding information from you that you might otherwise see if you disable it. Because for me, it is kind of annoying on PvE and PvP. Also, the HDR is a bit silly if you already have a IPS or OLED panel, where the colors are by default extremely good. The next option is the 120Hz mode in PvP. This one is only available on next-gen consoles. It is a very simple setting that you should totally enable without any hesitation, in case you have a 120Hz screen or higher, because it's actually a huge jump on FPS and the way you see the game. The next option is Field of View. This will allow you to see much more widely. The FOV is one of the reasons many console players think that on PC there's no recoil or that the weapons have more range. The first one is kinda true and it really affects the recoil of the weapon. But the range one is just a visual effect, since the distance of the weapons are exactly the same. Anyway, if you are ready in the new gen of consoles, you can finally enjoy this setting. And it is one of my favorites. However, I do not recommend that you max it out all at once. I personally use it at max, but I suggest you to try to find a good measure between 90 and 105. Since increasing your FOV can also affect your precision and visualization of the enemies at the cost of being able to see more around. Most dedicated players use it between 95 and 105. Just try it out and find the best option for you. Or you can put it at maximum and get used to it, as I did. Next up is the motion blur. This one is a blur effect that's applied when moving the camera. It is a setting that I hate because it prevents you to see clearly when you're moving around. I can understand and even recommend you to enable if you play at 30 FPS, but if you're playing at 60 or higher, I highly recommend you to disable this option, because instead of helping, you will see everything blurry. Finally, we have chromatic aberration and field grain, which are a bit annoying cinematic effects Luckily, in Destiny 2 they are not exaggerated, but anyway, I recommend you to disable them, because the game looks way better without them in my opinion. But if you actually like them, don't worry, they don't have a huge impact, so you can enable them if you want. Now, let's jump to advanced settings and optimization. At this point, we are going to be talking about the configuration and settings of the game on PC, since on this platform we have the game with way more options and settings. So, if you are from console and you are not interested, jump to the next part. Starting with all of this, obviously if you want the best performance, put everything on low. And if you want everything at the best aspect, put everything on ultra. If your PC allows it, of course. However, in this video we'll be showing the most optimized way to get the good performance without the game looking horrible. So here I'm gonna be giving you some optimization tips both in the game and also externally that will help you on performance. 
Another detail, Destiny is not that difficult to move at 60 FPS and 1080p. At least not in most gaming PC today. But in case you want to go above 100 FPS, it becomes an extremely demanding game both on CPU and GPU. That is why I try to optimize the game in the best possible way for me, despite being a lucky guy who has a fairly powerful PC. Now, if we look at the settings, in the first one, we can choose the game to have in window mode, full screen, or windows without borders. You can set it in the most comfortable way for you, but in my recommendation, to avoid performance problems and input lag, I choose full screen. As for resolution, put it the same as your monitor, quite simple. But now jumping to vertical sync, here it depends on your monitor and how many FPS you play. If you are someone with a 60Hz monitor and you notice your screen is cutting a lot, then enable it. But if you have a 120Hz monitor or higher, do not enable it because it generally increases your input lag. And by the way, if you have a high hertz monitor, make sure you have it enabled at maximum speed. Because there are actually some people who bought a 144 hertz monitor and they had it limited to 60 hertz for months. Anyway, at the same time, you don't want your PC moving the game at 200 or 400 FPS while your GPU or CPU is getting overheat, right? Well, in this case, you can use the FPS limiter. Here you can regulate the limit, this way your PC is not pushing unnecessary FPS. Also, remember that FPS affects certain movements in the game, such as skating with certain characters and to have a better response time. So in this case, even if your monitor doesn't allow you to see that amount of FPS, you can limit the game to 60, 100, 144, 200 or 240, depending on how your PC moves the game. I have it set it at 200 for myself. Now let's jump into the juicy stuff. First thing here is the anti-aliasing. This setting is to avoid seeing the pixels on the edges. We have the option to disable it, use FXA and SMA. How do they work? Well, the FXA brutally softs everything on the screen, making the game to not have any sharp pixels, but as a side effect, the game looks blurry. On the other hand, SMA eliminates the several edge pixels, but it keeps the game way more defined and visually sharp, although it consumes a little more performance. Choose the one that suits you better, and in case you're wondering, I use the SMA. And then we have ambient occlusion. If you want better performance, disable it. But I usually use HDAO, because I feel like the game looks a bit empty and flat without it. As for the anisotropic textures, put it to the maximum or at most lower, set it to X4 or X8. It is something that is barely noticeable in the game or in performance. But in any way, the ground textures are looking good. Now jumping to the general textures, this hardly affects the performance if you have a graphic with enough gigs like 6 or 8 and also having the game in an SSD which I totally recommend you to have faster loading screens. Coming back to textures, put it at least at mid but I recommend you to leave it a high or ultra because it will make the game look so much better with such a little effect on performance. On the shadows, set it to low or at most in mid since it is one of the requirements that consume the most performance. And in my opinion, they are not worth it. Just to make the shadows look a little bit sharper, come on. Also, please don't disable the shadows, they can be really useful for you. Now jumping into depth of field, this is something a little more unique that you can turn on or off as you like, and it is about blurring when you're aiming or rotating the camera in certain ways. The game might look a little bit more cinematic and cool with this effect, but I personally don't like it because it distracts me, or it can actually make it hard to see some things. So my recommendation is to disable it, or at least set it to low. Now in these three distance settings, they are just what they say. It allows you to see more in detail when you have things far away. Some objects will look much less detailed, like trees, however, the players and enemies will always continue to be visible, but only at lower quality in their textures and armor. These requirements are usually a bit more demanding and do not affect the game as much, so I prefer to keep them at the lowest. About the light effect, I have set it in mid, so it doesn't distract me, but I don't think it affects the performance, so set it higher if you want. And exactly the same about the wind. Finally, we have the rendering resolution, which I recommend you to have at 100. However, if you are having performance issues and you want to move the game at higher FPS, you can also lower it a little. But keep in mind that doing this, you will be lowering the resolution of the game, so it will look much worse in exchange for performance. Now, let's talk about extra performance on PC. I highly recommend you to watch certain optimization videos 
that can help you out to get the best performance of your OS. But if those are very complex things for you, the simplest way is just to use certain programs such as Noping, which not only improves your ping in games by looking for better servers, but it also has other benefits such as boosting your FPS in your games with the performance mode. So if you are interested, I will leave the link down below, which I totally recommend you to check. Also, another one you can use is Razer's program called Cortex, which can help you to block or limit background tasks when you open a game. Both are really good programs to easily optimize the performance of your PC. Now let's talk about gameplay settings. But first I need to recommend you one setting on sound, and that is to activate voice chat automatically. Because if one day a random player is interested in talking to you, they probably can't because you don't have this option enabled. Although if you do not activate for personal reasons, it is totally understandable. Now in the general settings, we're gonna be starting with the HUD opacity. I will only recommend you to make it less opaque if it only affected things like super and weapons. Sadly, since it also affects the radar, I recommend you to always set it to max. This way you can always have the attention on it. Anyway, you can always lower the opacity if you wish. And don't forget you can also disable it in case you want to record or take screenshots. So everything looks cleaner. Now comes an interesting one, which are the colorblind colors. People ask me a lot if I'm colorblind and no, I'm not. But in my opinion, with this setting enabled, I feel like the radar draws more attention. And I also like the colors on legendary equipment, among other things. The option I use is the middle one called Protanopia. So if you are interested, you already know where the options are and do not hesitate to try them yourself. The next one is the settings where we can have the reticle and you can choose between PC or console mode. This setting has the effect of putting the reticle a little lower to predict the recoil of weapons if you use a controller. My advice is to set it at PC mode, which is exactly at the center of the screen. The next setting is to change the color of the crosshair, however this don't affect the weapon crosshair. So the weapon reticle are totally on their own. My advice is to use a very flash one if you are a hip fire. this way it will make it easier for you to aim. But on the other hand, if you only use your weapons while aiming, you can set at any color you want. I will recommend less intensive ones, so this way they are not a distraction. The next setting is a very basic one, and is to choose if you want your characters with your helmet on or off in social areas, like the tower. I always have the helmet on, that's why you will never see my character's face, but I can already tell you that you don't want to see it either. The next option is the FPS counter. This one allows you to see exactly how many FPS you are moving the game at. Very useful, so this way you can monitor the performance in the game. Now let's talk about all the text chat options. They are very simple and easy to understand. And for now they are only on PC, but later on they will come to console as well. Anyway, the only important setting to highlight is to enable the local on team chat because it comes disabled by default. So if you want to say something or know if any random person you see say something to you, it will be good to enable that option. Don't you think? But there is another thing that can be very handy, and those are the text chat commands. They can make your life way easier. And to see them, just type slash, and you will be able to use some of them. However, there are even more. The best one is the slash join, where you can join anyone directly just by knowing the Banji ID. Doesn't matter if you're not friends, if you're not clanmates, you can join any person as long as their fire team is open. And these are all the settings I recommend. If you have any questions about it, do not hesitate to leave it a comment. I will try to solve all of them, so I hope all of them were helpful to you. And if that's the case, please leave it a like, and if not, then a dislike, I guess. And if you want to be aware of more videos that can help you to improve with interest content like this, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. So I hope you liked the video, have a good day, and see you later.